Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And my special guest today is Leighton O'Connor. Leighton, welcome. Hey, Walt. Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are regular viewers of North Shore Journal, we've had Leighton on as a guest before two or three times. Um, in, in the early uh, versions, uh, um, uh, Leighton was covering uh, international sailing regattas and doing uh, videos and stills. And then, uh, if I can say it this way, you charted a new tack. I did. Um, well, that was good. Charted a new tack. I like that one. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, yes, very good. Um, and, uh, and, and you are now a man of the cloth, and we'll, t we'll talk about that. But you are now, in the last show we did, uh, you talked about some very unique uh, missionary work that mm -hmm. you are doing, and we're gonna, and you're continuing that work. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. So, but just as a backup, so our, our folks uh, know who you are and are familiar with you, um, uh, you're you're a, a, um, a man of the cloth. You're you're a licensed minister. Tell us exactly what you're. I am a licensed minister with Assembly of God. Assembly of God. Okay. And uh, currently, I'm a pastor at Calvary Christian Church. Okay. Over in Linfield. Okay. And I've been there for over two years. Okay. I was a lay minister before I left on my trip in 2019, on my mission trip in my Jeep. Uh, before I left in 2019, in June, I was a lay minister over there. Which right. Means volunteer. Yeah. And in the middle of the trip, they decided to hire me. So I worked 20 hours from the road as a pastor, uh, handling ministries at the church. And then when I, the day, day after I got back, I was installed as a full-time pastor at Calvary. Okay, yeah. and, and, and we're going to talk about what you do, um, and the other thing that we're going to talk about as well is you are uh, the founder and pastor of the Christian Jeep Association, and yes. we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that mm -hmm. because that's very interesting. We've got some interesting photos and things like that. Now, uh, let's just summarize. The, the last trip you took was in 2019? Correct. So give us a kind of a quick overview. Where did you go? How many places did you stop at? So I left, I think it was June 6th or 7th from Linfield. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was on the road for six months in my two-door Jeep. Mm -hmm. And I partnered with the Jeep and Off-Road community in 46 cities to do outreach to the homeless. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by outreach is uh, I would have Beantown Blankets as a sponsor. So they would ship 50 blankets into each city I was going to be in. Right. So I had a leader in each city that would take delivery of the blankets. And I had a storage unit in Danvers filled with hygiene kits. These little hygiene kits which have toiletries. Yeah. And uh, I would have volunteers go into the storage unit every week and ship them ship, me to, ship them to the leaders I was in. Or if right. I didn't have a leader in the city, go to a UPS store and then I'd pick it up. So on a Saturday morning, I would meet anywhere from three to 25 Jeepers or four wheel, four wheel drive people, meet them in a Walmart parking lot or a uh, Starbucks parking lot. And they'd have their Jeeps fill up with stuff because I would already have an arrangement with them and they knew what to bring and where to meet me. Mm -hmm. And I had a leader in each city. And I'd show up, and there they all be, and their Jeeps would be filled up with stuff, and we organized the stuff, whether it were lunches or socks or cases of water, fruit, um, packaged snacks, expired baked goods from Walmart. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, and, and they would have already gone out and let the homeless community, the other the people that you wanted to bring in, they would have already done outreach to them to tell them to come to this particular location on a particular day. No, no. Day. What we would do is we'd, we'd, I'd show up at this location, and then we'd decide where we're going to go. Oh, okay. So we would set, like in New Orleans, we had 25 Jeeps. So we had, I think, four groups of Jeeps, and we'd go out to different sections of New Orleans where the homeless folks were. Okay. And we'd be in a parking lot or a church parking lot or near a community meal, All open right. our Jeeps up and say, okay, we have stuff. This Jeep has blankets. This Jeep has water. Yeah. This Jeep has hygiene kits. And they would go yeah. along and, and grab the stuff. Well, that, yeah. that actually makes a lot of sense because if you were in essential locations, a lot of these people don't have transportation. Right. Yeah. So they would have to go across the whole city. So this way you go to them. Right. Very, very interesting. But yeah. would they know ahead of time? Or uh, I guess your volunteers knew where the homeless people sort of yeah. congregated and the, the various community outreach places that, that they would visit. I, I have them do a little research. Yeah. But it's not too difficult to find homeless people in a... Even yeah. in a resort community, there's homeless people. Yeah, I was in a resort community, I think it was St. George in British Columbia, and I found shelters, and it was a high-end resort community. Yeah. So it's not hard to find people who are struggling with their housing. Yeah. Um, a good place that we go to is community meals. Yeah. So before or after community meal, we're in the parking lot giving out stuff, or we go to shelters, and 
Uh, sometimes they know we're coming. We volunteer at shelters before, helping to cook a meal. Yeah. And we just bring the stuff in and hand the stuff out inside the shelter mm -hmm. as well. Now, did this did, did these Jeep people exist as, as an organization? Or you were, you're the founder of the Christian Jeep Association. So were, were, they, were these people around doing this beforehand, or did you organize mm -hmm. them to no. do this? How did that happen? I don't think anybody has done this before. So my nonprofit is called Mission for Hope. Right. And then my other nonprofit is called Christian Jeep. And they're kind of related, but they're kind of separate. Um, Mission for Hope uh, is really about a nonprofit helping the homeless. Yeah. And before I left on the last trip, I founded the Christian Jeep Association, right. which is a fellowship of Jeepers yeah. who like to share the gospel and minister right. to other people. Yeah. So, um, so um, I now have 37 chapters of the Christian Jeep Association. We have. Fantastic. And they're all around the country. We had one chapter when I left in 2019. So they often partner with us when we're doing this outreach. A lot of the presidents of the chapters are handling the outreach in yeah. the cities I'm, cities I'm going to be what, in. What a fantastic success story. That, yeah. what, what, a, what a fantastic effort. I, it's I, all good. I, I commend you. I commend <laughs> you on that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now what people may not know, and you, you brought your Jeep here the last time right. here, and you've got it all, I want to say tricked out, but you have yeah. it all uh, customized so you actually sleep in it and you, you've right. added some some sort of a second story onto it, whatever, <laughs> whatever. And we're going to show some, some images. From, in fact, right now, uh, I'm going to ask Zach in our control room to start putting up the, the images that we have. And, and you can talk to these images as you see sure. them on the screen. Yeah. And then just ask Zach to, to go to the next one whenever you, okay. you feel like it. Okay. So, so this was some outreach in uh, Nashville. And this wasn't part of my trip. This is one of the test trips I did before I did the outreach in June. Back in early 2019, I did a bunch of test trips to see what I needed for the Jeep. And this is my first outreach I've ever did, ever did out of the back of the Jeep in Nashville. Uh, I think it was around February of 2019. And this is kind of a, a special place where I go um, on my trips to do outreach. All right. uh, next slide. So this is kind of the setup when I'm by myself doing outreach. So I'll run to a Dunkin' Donuts and get a couple boxes of coffee and try to ask them for a deal. I'll run to the Walmart. And I'll go to the. I'll, I'll fill my cart up with expired baked goods, and wheel over to the service desk and say, "Could I see the manager, please? I want to see if I can get these for free." Yeah. And a lot of times they're very generous about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now you you said that you have like blankets, and so so certain people will donate things for you, right? I imagine, but other people want you to pay for them, right? And is that how do you get your money? Is it through the Mission for Hope? If people right. can send you, and we'll we'll put up your yeah. your URL there for, for that. People who are very generous about supporting Mission for Hope. Yeah. And that's okay. where it mainly comes from. Yeah. But I have some really generous sponsors. Uh, Christian Books just donated a thousand Bibles yesterday for my upcoming trip. Oh, so congratulations. I have some very, very Fantastic. generous folks. Yeah. yeah. That's there, me and there. some baked goods in the back and tangerines. For some reason, people who are struggling with homeless love tangerines. <laughs> Plus, they're easy to manage in the back of the Jeep. Yeah, there you go. There <laughs> yeah. you go. Easy to peel. Next slide. So, this is. Uh, this was outreach in Alaska on my last trip. This, I think, was the fourth stop. And it was a very, very tough stop because we probably had 100 people in line at the back of the Jeeps to get things. And we ran out and we had 25 people left in line. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to be at, back in Anchorage in Fairbanks again on this trip, but I'm going to make sure I have extra blankets, extra hygiene kits uh, shipped into those cities. Yeah. Next slide. So we also uh, volunteer at shelters. This is uh, the, the uh, Anchorage crew. Uh, Jeepers, and we have volunteered to cook a meal before we did the outreach. Mm -hmm. Next slide. That's Anchorage again, uh, outside of a, a uh, homeless community center called Beans Cafe. Uh, next slide. So there's the Jeep off in the woods. Uh, a lot of what I do is I create content in the woods and social media so people follow me when I'm doing the, the Jeep stuff in the woods, which people are passionate about. So they follow me during the week when I'm on my trips. Follow me during the week while I'm in the woods in Alaska or British Columbia or the desert or Death Valley or wherever I am. And they say, oh, this is pretty cool. The pass is driving around a Jeep and it's all decked out to be overlanding. Then they follow me on the weekend when I'm doing the outreach. They say, wow, this is kind of interesting. This guy, you know, is off in the woods, camping in the woods in the middle mm -hmm. of no place. And now Saturdays he's in a city giving out blankets and hygiene kits. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of draw mm -hmm. my people into my now, world. Now, do, do some of the locals sometimes go into the woods with you and kind of like do a camping circle or anything like that? Or do you, are no. you pretty much solo? Pretty much solo in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I like my tranquility. And there you go. There's your... <laughs> There's my uh, condo on top, uh, <laughs> my tent, and it just uh, opens right up, and uh, I've got it pretty decked out. It's wired with 12 volt. I can monitor my two batteries from the top of the... in the tent, and uh, yeah, 
Did you yeah. ever have any trouble with like wild animals or nah, anything like nah. that? No, no. Or, no, I don't see somebody too many getting wild into animals, your food. Somebody not that not that they're attacking you, but you got to. As a safety measure, I will take my trash and put it on a rope and wrap it around a yeah. tree limb, so I raise it up high. But I haven't had any issues. Yeah. But I'm always prepared for something like that. I'll yeah. pick up some bear spray for my next trip. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just actually that's uh, probably up near Hampton someplace. Yeah, the nice. Yeah, and take the doors off and the windows off and. Yeah, there's an awning that comes off the back, and there's a refrigerator inside, there's a stove, there's a portable toilet, there's six gallons of water. When I'm overlanding or traveling a lot, I have a five-gallon tank of, for fuel that straps to the ladder. It's also set up to do a church service anyplace. Mm -hmm. So it's got two batteries. It's got a 1,000-watt power inverter, a 100-watt amplifier, sound mixer so you can plug in drums and guitars and everything right into the... Thing and it runs off an iPad, my sound mixer. Yeah. Then I have cordless mics. Okay. Uh, so I can do preaching or talking to people. And then it has special speakers, which are meant for boats, that are waterproof and vibration proof that are attached to the roll bars. Yeah. So now, I can do, I've done church services in Alaska, yeah. Key West, and the middle of no place. Now, are, the these, are these non denominational or what? Yeah, non denominational. Yeah, non -denominational yeah. too. I, I, I wonder if uh, there you are, they're beautiful picture. I wonder yeah. if, if our. Uh, Zach Courier, our, our, <laughs> our guy in the control room, was l looking at your Jeep there because he does have a Jeep. And he <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, when I saw it, I parked next to his Jeep, and I have a little card I put in all my Jeep I see, and it says, check out our website. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And they can go to the Christian Jeep Association yeah, website. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, and there that's you my go. home. There, there's your home, yeah. That's my home. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm. And, and maybe, um, maybe Zach, uh, 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 since... Um, Leighton mentioned it. You can put up the the uh, the URL, the the website, uh, and we can take a quick look at that. Um, so, it's so that's my website. www mission for hope. Now, is there information on that website uh, where people can access to to, to like maybe send a, with sure. a credit card, give you a donation or something like Since that? Since I designed the website, I'm a former web designer. <laughs> well, there you go. You got everything. I'll tell you maybe. exactly what's on the website. <laughs> A beautiful so, homepage with a video. Yeah. And then there's a list of every single city I'm going to go to. Yeah. When I'm going to be there. Yeah. And we set up a Facebook event for every single outreach in the city. Yeah. Also, uh, getting closer to June when I leave, there'll be tracking, so you can track me where I am every five minutes in the Jeep. Wow. Wherever I am so, in, the, in, the, in the North America. So you won't get lost. So that's, that's right. <laughs> but I'm going to turn off the tracking if I'm going shopping at Walmart or out deep. But you'll be able to track me around those. It's a, <laughs> yeah. Also on the the website is a way to volunteer at each outreach. Okay. So if you're in another part of the country and you want to volunteer for the outreach we're doing doing in Calgary, Calgary or Vancouver or Fairbanks <coughs> or wherever I am, uh, you can submit a form. We'll get your information. I send that information to the leader of that city, and they'll contact uh, the person about volunteering. Yeah, fantastic. And also on the website, of course, is a donation page. There you go. And there's four ways to give. <coughs> Uh, and there's, you can do it. There's a GoFundMe. There's Venmo. There's PayPal. And credit card. Yes. Yeah. And if you're following me on Facebook, you probably won't see a post of mine without a donate button. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we're raising money for fuel, which is going to be about ten grand. Uh, yeah, because fuel, fuel's uh, gone up, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So you're. Yeah. Also raising money so we can purchase those uh, hygiene kits and store them in a. The uh, the uh, uh, the uh, storage unit in, in uh, yeah. Linfield. Fantastic. Yeah. Now uh, you did mention June fifth, right. and that's the next topic I want to talk to you mm -hmm. about. You are ready to embark on another uh, journey like this, and tell us about that. This is going to be almost a year long, right? About ten months so long. So it's nine months long. Okay. Three hundred days. Uh huh. And I leave the parking lot at Calvary Christian Church on June fifth. Okay. And. Uh, on my way out, I'm going to have dinner with my mother <laughs> out in the western part of the state. And then I'm going to cruise to Indianapolis. That's our first stop. Okay. And I have an unbelievable leader there who's just got everything planned and shelters and unbelievable amounts of food and trailers with all kinds of supplies. And it's just, it just was an unbelievable stop last year. Yeah. And then uh, next I'll go to uh, Chicago for outreach and then uh, Denver for outreach and adding Salt Lake City to the list of cities I'll be visiting. Yeah. And then from Salt Lake City, I'll go up to Calgary and do outreach there and then shoot up to Fairbanks. Actually, Fairbanks is first. Yeah, Fairbanks. 
and spend some time driving around the woods a little bit in Anchorage. And are then, you going to uh, stop in Seward, Alaska, by any chance? Probably stop Because I, I have a fraternity brother, a college yeah. friend, who lives in Seward. I, I'll mm -hmm. let him know when you're yeah. going to be there. And, Definitely. And he I've can, been there he, he'll, he, he's a volunteer. He, he likes to volunteer for different help. things like that. Yeah. So now you're you're going to be in how many different cities this, this time 50. around? F 50 different. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, some of kind of ad hoc. So if I'm driving through a city and God puts it on my heart to go to Walmart and fill up my Jeep with stuff, oh, that's what I'll do. And then I'll go and hand out stuff by myself. Yeah. Now, how many miles per gallon do you get out of your, oh. uh, out of your Jeep? No. Oh. <laughs> it's, as it gets older, it's getting worse. But anywhere, anywhere from 14 to 18 to 19. If I'm seeing 19, I'm doing the happy dance, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And... and um, and you're going to be so you're going to be coming back if you're leaving June. So you're going to be coming back around April, right? Um, well, uh, the last five stops are home base, so wherever I'm living. I'm giving up my apartment to do this again. Yeah. So wherever I'm living from, there'll be home base stops. So I'm going to Newark. I'm going to Allentown, Pennsylvania, um, uh, Vermont, Manchester, New Hampshire, Providence, Hartford, uh, and uh, Lewiston, Maine. And my last stop will be. Here on the North Shore, and we'll meet, and we'll probably go to Beverly, to, the, go to Beverly to uh, River House, yep. Salem, Life Bridge, yep. uh, Project Hope in Gloucester. There's a ministry in Revere that does uh, helps the homeless on the beach, and we'll go into Boston. We'll send a team into Boston as well to yep. Methadone Mile, that area, which is really pretty sad. Yeah. Now, now, how do you decide which cities you're gonna you're gonna visit? You got the whole country, really. That to to, to yeah. Well, we've been, we've been doing outreach for the last two years locally. Yeah. And it's just wherever we haven't been to in a while. Yeah. So we've been doing outreach in Worcester, Springfield, mm -hmm. uh, Lowell, Lawrence. Uh, so mm -hmm. we've continued this effort locally for the last two years. We. It's not too hard, like I said earlier, it's not too hard to find people struggling yeah. with housing in any I'm city. I'm just wondering if you get like statistics that tell you cities that have a, I do. a high yeah. homeless population yeah, and, I do. and, and um, things like that. Yeah. And it's percentage or, or, or numbers. For instance, um, Springfield, Mass. has one of the highest percentage of homeless per capita. Yeah. Uh, Anchorage is one of the highest homeless per capita. Yeah. Uh, New York and L.A. have a large amount of homeless people. Yeah. Yes. Now, I'm wondering, I, I lived in Chicago, and mm -hmm. Chicago is a huge, huge right. metropolitan mm -hmm. area. So how, how do you decide? I mean, you could probably stop at 50 different places around the Chicago, right. so, Chicago area. Chicago last time was an amazing stop. I have an amazing leader, John. He's a leader in Chicago. And we had so many Jeeps, uh, and s we had a staging area where we packed bags of things on the other south side. And, uh, yeah, we just pick who might, might be the most in demand for yeah. Uh, we went to some uh, veteran housing and a bunch of other shelters in Chicago. Yeah. 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 And we volunteered a little bit in Chicago too. Yeah. Now, how do you, how do you, uh, do you have like a, 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 aside from the internet, do you like mm -hmm. talk to them on the phone or with, for, with, with your smartphone? Do you talk to these people ahead of time, say, I'm coming in on Route 90, Interstate 90, and I'll be. Oh, I, what I usually do, what happens during the week is uh, Friday night, I'll check on a hotel, yeah. pretty cheap hotel. Yeah. Or pretty bad. <laughs> and Saturday, That's right, we, we won't tell yeah. anybody. <laughs> Some of the stories I could tell you. Saturday mornings, we already know where I'm going to meet them, so I'll go to Walmart Park, and they're already there. And I have a little safety talk at 9 o'clock and uh, talk about what we're going to do, how we're going to stay safe. And I offer to pray over any Jeeps, bless any Jeeps, and give them a little sticker that says I was blessed for the Jeep. And then we head out um, after we get all the Jeeps organized with stuff, and we go to different places. And then we head back, meet up again afterwards. Um, if we have any extra things left over, we decide who's going to bring them to the shelters. And then we uh, have a little prayer about uh, being blessed for the day. And and uh, sometimes we all grab a meal together. But mm -hmm. that's basically the mm -hmm. format of the day. And, and you're now, are you actively looking and promoting to get new members and chapters? And how, how are sure. you doing that? Yeah, so we have 37 chapters of the Christian Jeep Association. Right. My goal is to have uh, a chapter in every state. Yeah. By the time I get back, because this gives a lot of exposure to the Christian Jeep Association. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm constantly posting Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, blog, you name it, mm -hmm. I'm on it. Now the kids have got me on 
uh, TikTok now, and they want me to do TikTok. So uh. <laughs> now, now, how do you? Um, I, I, I mean, this may not be an issue, or maybe I'm just barking up the wrong tree. But uh, you know, there's always people looking to to, to game the system. You know, to, to use right. something. Uh, how, how do you vet the the folks that you're that you're letting in, the folks that you're giving special information to, and everything? Or do you just trust that they're kind souls? You mean far as the people we're serving or the people that I'm working no, with? Oh, no, this, the, the people you're working with, yeah. Oh, uh, I trust, you know, I trust. Yeah. And I haven't run into a situation yet, but there's no real way they could take advantage of the organization. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, <laughs> I don't so, think there is, yeah. So um, uh, what I'd like to do now is we have a, we have a little video that you've uh, put together. And if, if Zach is ready, I'd like to... Uh, sure, want me to set up a little bit first? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please So don't. these are images from my trip in 2019, and they're almost pretty much all the stops I made. And if you look on the bottom, it says what stop it is. Right. And these are the teams of people or the outreach we did. All right, and this, is, this is the shorter video that, yeah, we, right. we're, that we're doing. Yeah. Okay, very good. <laughs> That's that's wonderful, yeah. Leighton. That's yeah. wonderful. Now, do you find um, when you talk to these people, mm -hmm. um, what do you find? I'm sure they tell you stories. They tell you right. their stories. What, what do yeah. you find? What kind of commonality do you find? Or what is the most common thing you hear from from these people about their plight or what they what they yeah. like to do? Or uh, this, uh, I actually was going to mention that because I try to, of course, talk to the people and figure out where they're at, yeah. why they were they're struggling with housing. You know, whether it's mental illness or addiction or family strife or medical issues and they choose for medical care or, or, or prescription rather than housing. So they all have a story and I try to get to get to know their stories and talk with them. Watching that video, I, I can think of so many stories in meeting these people and hearing their stories. One guy actually used to sing for Frank Sinatra. Wow. Yeah, and I met him in San Francisco and I believed him because he started singing. I'm like, wow. Yeah, and uh, just so all these little stories, and the video yeah. brings back all those memories of having these little interactions with these people and getting to know their plight and you know why they are at where they're at, and they're good, good people. Yeah, they're good people. They're not people that just are lazy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's easy, I guess, um, uh, to go from, from the heights down it to is. the depths. Uh, it is. Uh, you know, you squander your money or you have an a accident or your health fails mm-hmm. or, or, or what have you. Yeah. Uh, now, are there things that now, you know, you give them some food and blankets and things like that. Are there, are there things that they ask for, they say, gee, I, I need this or that, that, that you wish you had, or that have you changed what you offer because of what people have asked for? They ask for prayer. A prayer? And I, and prayer. And I asked them, do you need prayer? What, how can I pray for you? That th- thing seems to be the most comforting thing. Yeah. Because, you know, you pray with somebody and God can change somebody's life in a second. Yeah. And just praying with them and finding out what they need healing for, what, they need, uh, what, the, what they're struggling for with addiction or what their challenges are. And they really, really appreciate prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they, must, they must really get a feeling that somebody is looking out for them or somebody yes. senses their plight and, right. and is there to, to help them out. That, that must really lift their spirits. We don't want them to feel alone or outcast just because of their situation. They're yeah. people. Yeah. You know, they're, they're God's children. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, for, for the, the, the mission for hope, mm-hmm. um, is there anything that you would ask that people, aside from money, is there any other sort of a, a donation or anything else that, that you, you would reach out to, to people that, to ask for? It's tough uh, for donations to come in because they have to be organized and they need a staff to organize them. Yeah. And I can only take so much in a two-door Jeep, so the system's pretty organized how it works because I can only carry so much in the Jeep, so right. we sh- ship stuff to cities. But I would just ask to follow me on social media and yeah. uh, share my posts. Yeah, share my post is the best thing to yeah. do. I guess they could. I guess one of the ways is they could donate those things in the local cities. That way, yeah. you wouldn't have to schlep yeah. them around. So uh, part of my would, part of my mission is awareness. Yeah, start conversations. So if you are in a city and you have a shelter, drop by the shelter, drop off some pizzas. We've been doing homeless meals for the last couple of years and providing meals for River House and uh, Life Bridge and Gloucester and Bread of Life in Malden. But these people need volunteers. They need uh, they need things, um, so you know if you know of a shelter in your area, drop by. Yeah. Drop off a couple of pizzas on a Saturday afternoon, yeah. rather than going to the movies. <laughs> That's what I used to do with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now um, let's let's show the uh, the uh, uh, website again, uh, Zach, if we could. So. Uh, Mission for Hope, www.missionforhope.us, and you, you mention all the things that they can right. they can do Lots there. They can get donations. They can volunteer. Follow me on social media. And 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 do things like, and follow you on social media, etc. Yeah, very good. Well, uh, very very uh, enlightening and uh, uh, uplifting story for you, Leighton. I, I you. really commend you. Uh, um, you you're, you're walking the talk. As, as as they say, and I want to want to thank you for coming in and, Thanks and for sharing. Me, and when we, um, I'll, I'll make sure that I let my friend in, in Seward know Definitely. when you're, you're coming on. And then when you come back, we'll sit down here again and talk Love about to. what uh, what happened. Leighton, thank you very Thanks, much well, for, for um, yep. Thank you very much, Leighton. And uh, I'd like to uh, remind our viewers uh, that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.